Hello everyone, thank you so much for tuning in to yet another sweet hour of prayer. And today, I wanted to continue the subject of the body of Christ and the bride of Christ, how that there is a humongous difference between the body and the bride. And we want to continue this subject on the basis of where the body is going to be. Meaning, after those that uh, are part of the body of Christ, after our lives have expired on this earth, after we've done the will of God for our lives uh, on the earth, what's, what's going to happen to us? What's going to happen to us? You know, have you ever thought about that? You know, yes, we're going to heaven, but is that it? Right. And so I wanted to go ahead and give you a, a rundown of what's going to happen to the body of Christ. So let's say the last trump were to sound right now. Right now, the cell phone would hit the ground. Okay. <laughs> and... I would be caught up bodily to be with the Lord. At the same time, if there were saints here, if part of the, the body of Christ who is in these graves, maybe, right? When that trump sounds, they will come up out of that grave. All right? And they will no longer be here. All right. And then, of course, that'll start Daniel's 70th week, the tribulation. Not going to get into that. I will get into a couple of other resurrections that are a part of the first resurrection. And that is the 144,000 Jews. OK, uh, they'll actually be raptured. OK, and then and then the tribulation saints. Right. All those uh, that have died will be resurrected. All those that have gone on to be with the Lord, all right? And then, of course, those two prophets, okay? So, of course, all these resurrections are part of the first resurrection, but if you are not a part of the body of Christ, you're not going to be resurrected until after the thousand-year reign or the millennial reign of Jesus Christ that's when your resurrection is going to take place and that's called the second resurrection no wonder the Bible says blessed is he that is a part of the first resurrection so we which are alive and remain those that are dead in Christ will not prevent those right that are dead in Christ right but they will come first then us right and then the 144,000 uh, and then the tribulation saints and then of course uh, the two, the two prophets, of course, Enoch and Elijah. So, because all those are two men that never died, and of course, it's uh, appointed to men to once to die, and after this is the judgment. And so we see the necessity of separating the body of Christ from the bride of Christ. Why? Well, because you cannot resurrect a city. You understand? When God talks about resurrection, he's always talking about the body, not a not his bride, the body of Christ. Bodies get resurrected, okay, not cities. And we know from Revelation chapter 21 that the bride of Christ, the lamb's wife, is a city. It's a city, not, not just any city, but the holy city, New Jerusalem. Now, I don't know what procession they're doing, and I don't know if that person knew the Lord or not, but we got to get back to letting people know that not knowing the Lord is a serious, serious thing, okay? It's serious, and 
We need to let people know that Jesus Christ is coming in the clouds. Does that make sense? He's coming in the clouds to meet us in the air. Does that make sense? And so there's going to be a perusia right there in the air somewhere. And we which are alive and remain, we will be caught up with him. And when you remind people of this, you're literally purifying them. By reminding them that the coming of Christ is coming soon. And when we say coming, we're not talking about the second advent of Christ when he comes out of the clouds with his saints, comes from heaven with his saints, stepping on the Mount of Olives and cleaving it in the midst so that that whole mountain goes from east to west and then enters the temple and just starts ruling and reigning, devours the Antichrist by the breath of his mouth, right? By the word, by the spirit of his mouth, devours the Antichrist and the enemies of God. And there will be 200 miles of blood up to the horse's bridle. And that's how ferocious Armageddon will be. Yeah, that's Armageddon. That's what they call the battle of Armageddon. Listen. We're probably going to do another series on uh, it's not battle, it's massacre. Just like we did with it's not the body, it's the bride. It's not battle, it's massacre. It's the massacre of Armageddon. I remember one brother was actually bringing that out. And I said, yeah, that's true. There's not going to be a battle against Armageddon. A lot of times people pit God up against the devil, you know, like they're they're fighting each other like this toe-to-toe. -to -toe. You don't go toe-to-toe -to -toe with God. You get eliminated or you get on his side. There's no toe-to-toe, -to -toe, you know. So you don't have to dream up off of these, all of these strategies and see what spirit do I pray against now, you know, or what, what am I? No, you don't have to do all that because God, when you're following the Lord, you're already ahead of all the principalities and powers out there. You simply need to follow the Lord, you simply need to worship Him. You simply need to do what He says for you to do in that moment. If that's, uh, you know, commanding the spirit of Jezebel out or the spirit of Leviathan out, then great. But the key is to do what He says. You know, that's that's the strategy. That was the apostle's strategy. That's your strategy. Listen, that's the body's strategy, right? Because when we get out of there, right, there's no exit strategy. That is the strategy. And he's going to save us from <laughs> this untoward generation because we said, Lord, we want you. And when we said that, when we confess Jesus as Lord, when we believe that God raised him from the dead at that moment, according to the word, we got saved. Now, I can't tell you you're saved. Only you know you're saved. All right? And you have that witness in yourself. Where's the body going? Where is the body of Christ going? The body of Christ is going to the bride of Christ. And the body will be enjoying the marriage supper of the Lamb. Woo! Can you imagine that seven-year dinner? It's going to be amazing. Can't wait to see you. God bless you. God loves you. God smiles when he sees you.